7.43. Good morning to you. You're watching and listening to Breakfast with Stephen and Ellie. It's time to go through the papers now. And joining us this morning is Deputy Editor at Spite, Fraser Myers, and Writer and Columnist, Emma Wolfe. Good morning to you both. Really good, good to have you with us. Uh, Fraser, let's start with Gary Lineker's return to Match of the Day last night on the BBC. Yeah, so Gary Lineker was back for the uh, FA Cup match uh, between Man City and Burnley last night. This obviously follows the huge explosive row between uh, Gary and the BBC after he tweeted uh, some quite scathing comments about the government's immigration policy comparing um, comparing the language used by Braverman and others um, to 1930s Germany. Uh, I didn't want Gary to be sacked or suspended for his comments, but clearly there is an issue here of BBC impartiality, and it feels like Gary has won. Some people are suggesting that, you know, Gary Lineker and his mates are more powerful than the BBC um, executives here. And, you know, Tim Davey, the BBC, um, the head of the BBC, has clearly struggled to hold the line on impartiality. It's not even clear where the line is, in fact. The BBC doesn't have a clear position on how uh, stars like himself, um, who aren't part of the news team, um, should behave on social media and things like that. So um, the BBC is in a bit of a crisis here. I think the other thing that this issue raises is that there is an enormous double standard in public life in terms of what people can get away with saying and what they can't. I mean, at the end of the day, Gary, what Gary Lineker did was essentially minimise uh, the Holocaust, uh, which is an extraordinary and really crass thing to do. Um, he's been pictured here um, with Alistair Campbell, uh, who he hires to do a podcast. Now, Alistair Campbell is an unrepentant war propagandist. Apparently, he's an acceptable person to work with and be, be chummy with. And it seems as if you can kind of get away with this stuff if you're seen as on the right side of history, the right side of the debate, if you're one of the kind of elect few and seen as progressive. In fact, you'll be hailed as a as a kind of hero. There's no um, if you were a gen if Gary Lineker were a gender critical feminist who believed in biological sex, or if he had said the opposite and said actually I have a problem with this small boats crisis. I don't think the BBC would have been as quick to restate him. Mm. Emma, what do you make of, of this debacle? Well, I think it was pretty obvious that it was going to be a little slapped wrist, that it was all going to be pretty cosmetic, this thing, and that he would be back within, you know, within days of the following weekend. Mm. Um, and I agree with Fraser that, you know, yeah, there are, it, a lot of people within the corporation have said there's one rule for Gary Lineker and, uh, you know, another rule for everyone else. Mm. A lot mm. of other presenters, and people know it's at that pay grade, oh, yeah. who are not able to get away with this kind of behaviour. And effectively, what Gary Lineker has said is that the views of, you know, a, a majority of the electorate who are concerned about migration and about the issue of small boats coming over to this country, those people are effectively xenophobic or racist. Yeah. And so, yeah, and, and, and actually the other thing that really winds me up is it became very quickly, it became about Gary Lineker. It became about Gary Lineker and the BBC, about personality and all of that, and it wasn't anything to do with, you know, compassion or people coming over and um, mm. all boats mm. risking their lives. Yeah, it, look, I think we've got a problem with your mic, so we're going to sort that out. In the meantime, Fraser, let's have a look at the Sunday Telegraph, should we? Um, and the SNP, mm. all, I mean, the SNP is, is unwinding, unravelling <laughs> at the moment, and now there's demands to, to restart the leadership contest, which yeah. isn't going to happen. The, the SNP is exploding before our, our very eyes. I mean, pretty much since the resignation of Nicola Sturgeon um, a few weeks ago, uh, the, the sort of party machine has been breaking down. Um, so her husband, Peter Murrell, who's been head of the, uh, the chief executive of the SNP since uh, the 90s, um, has now had to step down because he's been accused of misleading the public over the number of SNP members. Um, in the past couple of years, the membership of the party has taken a pretty catastrophic nosedive. I mean, there's been a few causes to that. One is the um, High Court ruling or Supreme Court ruling saying that um, the SNP can't unilaterally declare independence. That will have put off a lot of members. There's been the... Um, there's the creation of the Alba Party as well, um, Alex Salmon creating this alternative um, independence movement. Um, but most recently, and I think most significantly, there's been the uh, rows over the Gender Recognition Reform Bill, which I think have really, you know, split the leadership from the party base in quite a significant way. Uh, and now the SNP, after claiming Nicola Sturgeon's scalp, um, it's now claimed her husband's scalp. And it raises questions for the leadership because it seems as if the party machine is backing Hamza Youssef. Mm. And um, a lot of people 
are suggesting that they might not trust the results if he wins because he's been so, um, you know, so supported by the, the by the machine in that sense, and that machine is now so thoroughly discredited, having lied about the membership. Um, lied about the membership figures. Oh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one to watch. Very difficult to prejudge any of that. Mind you, for one sort of beleaguered leader, if you like, as, as Nicola Sturgeon prepares to step down, uh, to another who's already gone, uh, Boris Johnson in the Sunday Telegraph, Emma. Um, he, he's facing a committee this week to talk mm. about uh, party gates. Yeah. And, and this is... The, the, he could face real sanctions if they find against him. He could. However... Apparently, there's a dossier which is going to clear him. Well, his allies are saying, you know, they've got bombshell dossier, they've got new evidence, they've got many, many, many WhatsApp messages um, that prove that he was absolutely, um, that he did not knowingly mislead um, MPs over the lockdown. I mean, this is this is popcorn stuff. This is four hours on Wednesday, Wednesday <laughs> afternoon, that we get this four-hour grilling. Um, and it really is crucial to Boris Johnson that he survives this and that he can answer these questions. Um, his, obviously, his allies are coming out in force saying they've got new evidence. Um, but it could be potentially explosive. They're also trying to discredit Sue Gray, continuing to try and discredit Sue Gray, as it appears over the last few days, that possibly those meetings, those chit-chats with Sir Keir Starmer, the leader, the Labour leader, maybe started a little bit earlier than they um, first uh, revealed. And that so, you know, her investigation was or was not entirely impartial. But this is, I mean, this, I mean, is, what, this, is, all, this is all nuanced, though, isn't it? Because mm. he's not saying that he, he's not claiming he did didn't break the lockdown rules, you know, he's been fined and all the rest of it. It's about saying he, he thought he was obeying the rules, therefore he didn't mislead. So Parliament. he did not knowingly mislead. But, I mean, this is all Westminster bubble stuff. Do people care now? It is, and also, Stephen, if he had all this new evidence, would he not have brought it out? If he had these messages, these WhatsApp messages haven't suddenly appeared. They were on his phone seven months ago, yeah. whatever Partygate was, the investigation. Um, so it does seem odd that he would... I mean, apparently he's got new witnesses, but... See, seems unlikely that he would not have produced that evidence to fight tooth and nail at the time. Well, I, I suppose that's the, th the distinction to make. The, the Privileges Committee is about that distinct question of did he mislead Parliament. But, I mean, the moral judgment that people are going to make is that this guy was having parties and we've seen pictures of it and we, we know about it. The public have pretty much made up their own minds on this. It's not going to exonerate him in the eyes of, of most, you know, right-thinking people. Clearly, he did something wrong. And it took him a very, very long time uh, to own up to it. I think there is something quite funny, though, in the fact that one of his defences is the fact that we put out these pictures on the official government Flickr account. And, um, you know, this... So clearly, this was a scandal that was hiding in plain sight. It's also true that um, in June 2020, in The Times, there was a report about um, Boris um, receiving his birthday cake. And at the time, seemingly no one batted an eyelid. No, exactly. I do wonder whether, you know, clearly he did break the rules and, and, that, and that's wrong. But I wonder whether it's because the length of the lockdown dragging on has made, uh, um, you know, by the time we were looking back at this scandal in 2021, maybe we were all a lot more angry uh, with him and that has coloured how we viewed these meetings. I just don't think anyone cares anymore. I think, I think yeah, exactly. Just, yeah, the We've scandal has the gone photos. on for long. We know that there was a lot, whether it was Boris or not, we know there was a lot of drinking, a lot of gatherings and parties and get-togethers going on at a time when the rest of us were told, can't leave the house, can't go to the supermarket except for essential purchases, can't see anyone except maybe one person bubble up, you know. We, we, and, and we all made it, you know, once, once we saw that video um, of, I, I've forgotten her name. Allegra. Uh, Allegra. Allegra Stratton laughing and joking about the parties. I think that's when everyone made their mind up, you know, and people's minds are not going to change by, um, by, as a result of Boris producing this evidence. But it might get him um, off the hook in terms of this um, parliamentary um, privileges committee, because if that goes wrong for him as well, there's the potential to um, a by have a by-election. Yeah. If, he's, if he's suspended from the House, then his constituents have a right to, to recall him. So that could be pretty spicy. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we've just got time for, for one more, and this caught my eye. It's uh, less fish in fish pies, Emma. Yeah, this, this, is, this is, well, it's a triple whammy, basically. You know, shrinkflation, this mm. annoying term. It's a triple whammy. We're getting, prices are going up on food, but we're also, the supermarkets have revealed that we're getting less quality ingredients, so less meat, less fish, less nuts and seeds, less good stuff in the things that we buy, and... Um, sizes are going down. So you've got things like your bags of your cheddar, cheddar biscuits or whatever, much less cheddar in them, much less fish in your fish pie, much less meat in your lasagna. Really, I mean, a list of things, much less orange juice in your orange drinks. In your orange um, juice. 
In your orange <laughs> juice, yeah, but also in your sort of fizzy, fizzy orange juice that we don't talk about. Um, and hundreds of products have been analysed and all the key ingredients are being replaced by things like water, rice, oats, sort of fillers. Mm -hmm. It's really shocking and actually consumers don't realise this. They're having the wool completely pulled over their eyes. And um, yeah, we're getting less quality nutrition and much, much, much smaller sizes for more money. Mm -hmm. People are calling it very, very cynical of the big brands, the supermarkets and the manufacturers. Mm -hmm. Oh well, but can you taste the difference? Ask the they can't taste the difference. Do you have to worry about it? I don't know. Fraser, Emma, thank you both very thank much you. indeed. Thank Good to you. see you. But all the top stories heading your way after a look at today's weather forecast.